want to welcome you to our 11 a.m. drive-in style service. Thank you for joining us, and then also we're able to simulcast this service through the FM receiver, uh, 100.1 FM. All residents of Hunterton do not have access to the internet are able to listen to the services on the radio. And then, of course, we want to welcome all those who are watching us on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us as we worship the Lord together. Now, uh, a number of folks who are not only at home, but also in their vehicles when we're having congregational music because of not having a screen or the ability to put sheet music in your hand to follow along. We have now posted the words to the congregational songs on our Facebook page. So if you have an electronic device, obviously you can go to our Facebook page there in your car and be able to have words sing along. We're going to look at this week, putting something on a media page on our church face, our church website, maybe on Friday, where you could download that on a sheet and bring it with you. So we're looking every week to make this time together uh, easier for everyone to sing out and worship the Lord. And so we're glad you're here. Let's sing to King Jesus. What do you have for us, Andrew? Good morning. We're going to worship the Lord this morning, singing at Calvary. Savior Jesus Christ who died at Calvary but is risen from the grave at the right hand of the Father. So we have a lot to celebrate this morning. So let's pray that the Lord would touch our hearts in the service uh, to get the pastor the words to speak. Also I have a couple more prayer requests. Uh, Brother Tommy Jones, um, he had been to the hospital, uh, was severely dehydrated, but he is back home now doing a whole lot better. So please pray for him. Uh, Stephanie Poole with her, her dad passing away, uh, Steve Hardy. So please pray for the Hardy family as they go through this difficult time. Also, Miss Jean Goff uh, going through a couple of things uh, physically. Pray for her. She has some tests in the future. And Brother Harry Joyner as he continues to recuperate. And it's great to see Miss Becky here. Y'all continue to remember her Amen. in prayer Amen. as the Lord continues to heal her heart. So let's go ahead and pray together. Lord, we just thank you so much for the absolute gorgeous morning that you've given to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everyone here today, Lord, and everybody that's listening and watching, Father. I pray, Lord, we'd all worship you in one spirit, Lord, with pure hearts, Father, putting you first and uh, just dedicating ourselves to you, Lord, each and every day. Lord, we just lift up all these prayer requests, Lord, because, uh, Lord, they are special to you, each and every one of them, none too small, none too big, God, and thank you for your love for each and every one of us. I pray you bless the entire service for your honor and your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. Well, again, good to see you in the service, and I tell you what, during this difficult time i have found that the lord has just drew me closer to him and i hope the same has been for you i know a lot of you probably feel extremely lonely feel like maybe you're forgotten god has not forgotten you no matter what's going on whether you have a job don't have a job you're just stuck at home i i was driving the buses around the other day and i saw miss grace uh outside of her house and i saw that uh, one of her grandkids had driven up and well, had her kids 
kids with her and uh, just the, the joy on her face just being able to see them and just maybe think about how God feels about us, the joy that we bring to Him. Uh, so don't forget that, that, that you were created for Him, to worship Him, and for His pleasure. Let me give you a couple of announcements real quick. Of course, don't forget, uh, this afternoon, uh, we're going to have our Facebook Live service at 5 p.m., so please don't forget about that. And also, tonight is uh, the Singspiration. We're actually going to have uh, several people come and sing. So it's going to be a little bit of a different service, but it's going to be a special service, so please tune in. Don't forget about that. Also, of course, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, uh, going to have the Facebook Live service. Uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock, I uh, had a, a good showing with our teenagers, Zooming during the Glooming. I don't even know what we're calling it. I'm just going to make it up as I go. Uh, but really enjoyed that, and um, appreciate you getting your teenagers to listen and uh, be able to see their faces. is just a blessing for me. On Fridays, as you heard last week, Brother Dan Patrick has started sort of like our Sunday school hour, but on Fridays, uh, it's called What the Bible Says, and that's uploaded at 12 o'clock every Friday uh, on the Mount Calvary, uh, was it the YouTube page, right, Pastor? And Facebook. And Facebook, both of those. So please tune in and see that. Uh, already had the first installment. Also, we have our children's church with Brother Timmy Dixon, and the pastor helped out with that, helped out with that as well. So please turn into the, tune into that if you would. Get your kids to tune in. I know they'll be greatly blessed because of it. All right, now we're going to worship the Lord again. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Andrew. Uh, we're going to sing the hymn at, at the cross next. And um, it, it's interesting, um, you know, that this song was originally written to say, um, would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? But it's interesting that as time goes by, a lot of hymnals change that. Because that's too demeaning for a, a, a human being to be called a worm. You know, but in the Lord's eyes, that's what we are. We're dirty, rotten sinners. Right. And it's only for the love and grace of God that we are anything but that. Um, and I think it's, it is important as Christians to, to, to remember what God saved us from and who we are in his eyes. And it's only for the blood of Jesus that covers us that he sees us anything but dirty, rotten sinners. So let's sing this hymn together at the cross.
Of course, we have some giving stations set up or when you're driving the, out of the parking lot. If you're going left, you can choose the basket on the left-hand side from your driver's door. If you're going right, you can take the basket on far right from the driver's door. Those are at home. Here in just a moment, we have our special music. If you like to give online, and a number of people have chose that option in these days, you can go to our church website. That's Mount Calvary, fwbchurch.com. At the bottom of the page, you'll see the word donate. You can click on that word and through PayPal be able to give your weekly tithes and offerings. A number of folks are mailing in their tithes and offerings. For those who would like to do that, you can send your weekly tithes and offerings to Mount Calvary Free Will Baptist Church. That's P.O. Box 250, Hookerton, North Carolina, 28538. Or if you want to stop by during the week from 10 until 2. Brother Kevin or Miss Karen will be here specifically looking for you to come and to be able to drop off your weekly tithes and offerings. Right before we have our special music, which also will serve as an offertory for those who are at home, want to mention to you this afternoon at 2 o'clock at the Snow Hill Cemetery will be the graveside service for Steve Hardy. So again, continue to remember Stephanie, her family, and your prayers in these days and those that can be there for that graveside service. I know the family certainly would appreciate your attendance there with us. What a joy it is to be able to have with us a number of gifted talented people in our ministry that are able to lift up their voice for King Jesus. You pray at this time as Brother Andrew and Miss Allison come to bring our special music right before our message today.
Thank you so much for the Andrew and Miss Allison for that great song. So, these days of being outside, we've all had to make some adjustments in the service uh, from me getting used to on Sunday morning staying behind a microphone. Those who know me have watched me preach in other services know I like to move around, but for necessity for folks being able to hear, I try to stay behind the microphone. Another thing I've had to get used to doing is taking my sermon notes, condensing them, and tape them to the platform. Now, the last two or three weeks, I've condensed them to three pages. This week, I could just get them on four pages. I just couldn't stop. And uh, anyway, so trying to figure out where to put my Bible at up here so I don't cover up on what the Lord's put on my heart to say. But again, thank you for joining us in this hour. I have no idea how long this is going to last. Of course, many of us listened to our governor this week as the stay-at-home order uh, will stay in place at least May the 8th. After that, we'll move into a period which is known as phase one that will last two to three weeks, maybe longer, where a lot of things don't change a whole lot in phase one. In phase two, on some level, uh, we will be able to meet back in a church building again. As we get close to that, we'll begin to kind of share as a ministry how we're going to try to approach that. But I am so glad that you're here today, either on property, listening on your radio, or watching us on Facebook. I'm glad that on some level, we can still come together to be able to have church. And here it's saw uh, in, in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 9, we're going to pick up reading today in verse number 18. The Bible says, and it came to pass. I love that passage of scripture in the Bible because it reminds me that everything that happens in life is going to come. But praise God, one of these days, it's going to pass. If you're looking forward to the day that the coronavirus passes, can you get a big amen this morning? And it came, and it passed. As he was alone praying, that his disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, Who say the people that I am? They answering said, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah, and others say that one of the old prophets is risking. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be slain, and be raised the third day. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come to his own glory and in his Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of of God. Let's pray together. Father, I love you. Lord, right now, I pray that you take this old preacher. Lord, you'd hide me behind the cross of Calvary this morning. That you'd forgive me of every uh, sin of word, deed, action. God, I want to be a clean, anointed vessel, used of God in this hour to proclaim your truth. So, Lord, I pray that you would speak to me, speak through me. Lord, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture that's going to ask us if we're going to be what we ought to be. Lord, it's going to require us to be willing to do what Jesus instructs his disciples to do. Lord, speak to me through me. Lord, today, no doubt, Lord, between this property, folks either listening on the radio or watching on Facebook, there may be some who have never received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. God, in these days, through this pandemic, you have used this for them to, uh, Lord, maybe unlike they ever have before, begin to watch church services, to begin to ask questions, to maybe even begin to open the Bible and begin to read and try to find out what God is trying to tell them. God, today, may you help them to see there's a God in heaven who loves them that wants to save them today. So save the sinner. Reclaim that sin. 
Give us the grace that we need in this hour to rise up and be what you want us to be. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, thank you for joining us today. This is week number four of our drive-in church service where a number of cars and men, good crowd today, are gathering on property. Folks are listening at home on radio or on Facebook. Thank you for being here today. I'll never forget on week number one is Brother Wayne, Brother David Joyner, Clay, and other folks out here getting things set up. Uh, unlike today, it seems like there was not a cloud in the sky. And man, the sun was beaten down. And Brother Wayne looked at me. Where are you at, Wayne? Wayne's somewhere at me. Honk the horn for Jesus. But Brother Wayne, he said, man, preacher, it is hot out here. Now, if you've got a hairline like me and Brother Wayne have, on a hot day when the sun's beating down, you could about fry an egg on top of our domed old head there. And it was hot that day. To say the least, we were slightly uncomfortable. I couldn't help but go back in my mind when thinking about that day to something that took place at our house just about two years ago. It was August. It was the first week of teacher in service. And I remember that Monday when I left the house, I noticed that the temperature in the house was slightly elevated. As the day went on and got into the afternoon hour, my wife called me and said, Frank, I think something is wrong with the air. The temperature in the house continues to rise. And for lack of a better way of putting it, the air condition that was about as old, it probably came over on Noah's Ark, had finally given up the ghost. It was gone. And here we are, the week of in service, the hottest week of the summer that year. It was bowling hot. I had to go out of town that day, got back in late. I'll never forget walking into the house. Looking at the temperature gauge there on the thermostat, and it was either in the upper 80s or the upper 90s in our house. I mean, it was roasting hot. I looked at my wife. I looked at our kids. I said, that's it. We're done. We went back to bedrooms. We grabbed axes, drug them down the hall, drug them down the yard, went down to my wife's fifth grade classroom, threw the mattresses on the floor, turned the air condition on, and just laid on the floor and just said, thank you, Jesus. We've got somewhere to go. To, to say the least, that week until air condition was able to uh, be put in at the house, we were a little bit on the uncomfortable side. And I got thinking about that, and I began to think about where we're at in this hour today. The coronavirus, in many ways, has made so many of us in this whole world uncomfortable. We've become uncomfortable, and we have all kinds of questions going through our mind, like, Lord, when is this finally going to be over? For some, when am I going to be able to go back to work? Others, especially the elderly, concerned about perhaps uh, catching this deadly disease for those who are elderly or have pre-existing conditions. Some wondering, hey, I, 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 will one of my family members contract this? Parents asking the question, will there ever be a day that my kids can buy, go back to school? Can I hear an amen on that? Is there ever going to be a day when we can get them out of the house and drop them back off with the teacher and have a little bit of quiet around the house? Hey, listen, all kinds of uncomfortableness going on as a result of the coronavirus. Yet here in this passage we read a moment ago in Luke chapter 9, we find that Jesus is about to have a conversation with his disciples that makes them uncomfortable. It begins with what I call a family chat. Around our house sometimes we'll get the kids together in the living room and sit down and have a, a, a family meeting. Here Jesus is having somewhat of a family meeting with the disciples. And ask them this question. First of all, whom say the people that I am? And they begin to conjecture. Some, John the Baptist, or one of the prophets has been arose from the dead. And then, it gets more personal. He says, but whom say ye that I am? Old Peter, of course, gives what many refer to as the great confession when he says, Thou art the, the Christ of God. In one of the other Gospels, he says, Thou art the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so here we have this taking place. Then Jesus gives them a charge. He says, What I've just talked to you about, I don't want 
you to share this with anyone that the time is not right yet for the world to know what is about to take place. But I want you to know. Then he begins to share with them some things that are about to change the mood in the room, if you will. Begin to make those who are listening to him uncomfortable. See, these disciples had left everything that they had ever known in their life. Many of them were fishermen. They put down their nets. They left their boats. They followed Jesus. Matthew, who was a tax collector, who was making big bucks, a big living, was willing to give that up to follow Jesus Christ. There were some political zealots who were looking for a revolutionary who fell in love with Jesus, who got saved, who put down their revolution and started following the Redeemer of the world. They were putting all their hopes and dreams that this is the Messiah who would come, who would overthrow the Roman Empire, who would raise up that Jewish kingdom once again. And yet Jesus, here in verse 22, says, Fellas, it's not going to be long before I'm rejected. It's not going to be long before I suffer like no man has ever suffered. And on an old rugged cross like we have betrayed here on our property for our drive-in services, Jesus was nailed to an old rugged cross and he died for the sins of the world. And he said, by the way, God, in three days I'm going to rise again. But understand this. Between the rejection, the suffering, and the dying, these men were in shock. That They were feeling a deep sense of uncomfortable. Their world was being turned upside down. Everything that they were used to or were hoping for seemed like it was being dashed before their very eyes. And Jesus takes it a step farther. He says, men, if you're going to follow me, if you're going to become the very best Christian that God can help for you to be, you're going to have to be willing to move out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to be willing, for lack of a better way of putting it, to become uncomfortable for Jesus Christ to be able to be used of God to reach your world for Jesus. Now let's fast forward in time, 2,000 years. 2020, the reality is every one of us in the world today, especially in America, are spoiled rotten. We like things our way. We don't like things to upset our apple cart. We don't like to become uncomfortable. We don't like for our schedules to be changed. We're in many ways like the old Burger King slogan, we want everything our way. And all of a sudden this coronavirus thing has taken the world by storm. It's upset our apple cart. It's changed the way that we live our lives. And it has made all of us on some level, uncomfortable. But God says, listen, if you want to be used of Christ to be a difference maker in this world, we must be willing to become uncomfortable for Jesus Christ. So this morning for the next few minutes, I'd like to us to examine some of the words that Jesus shared with his disciples as we consider the subject this morning, uncomfortable uncomfortable. There's four truths that Jesus shared with his disciples on this subject of being uncomfortable for Christ. Notice in verse 22, we begin with the uncomfortable Christ. The uncomfortable Christ. Look at verse 22. The Bible says that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Now listen, I realize for all of us, the last six weeks of our lives has been tough. It's been a time filled with a lot of fears, some concerns, some worries. It's turned our world upside down. Our schedules have changed. Our schools have closed. It's caused us to miss out on being able to go into the church building, sit on the church pews, and have church like we've had church our entire life. It's put people out of work. It's closed businesses. It's made getting groceries at the grocery store feel like taking advanced calculus. I never thought getting groceries could ever be as complicated as it is today. You show up at the store, they got an arrow that says you go in this way. They have an arrow that tells you you go out that way. When you walk in, you got tape all over the floor. 
you know, six feet apart, six feet apart. The other day, Hannah Brooke and I had to slip down to the grocery store to pick up some groceries. And I'd start walking down the aisle. And Hannah Brooke would say, Daddy, you're going the wrong way. I said, what do you mean? She said, you see that arrow there? you got to be going this way. Listen, it, it's just made everything. It feels so uncomfortable and so different. This time of the coronavirus has kept us away from the people that we love. How many grandparents are here today that it's been about six weeks since you've been able to hold your grandkids? Would you give me a horn honk today? Listen, this is a tough time on folks, but may we not forget the fact that what we're dealing with, listen, is nothing compared to what Jesus went through for you and for me on Calvary 2,000 years ago. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I'm glad that Jesus was willing to become comfortable for you and for me. Can I get a witness today? He was willing to get uncomfortable in a manger. He was willing to get uncomfortable on the dusty roads of Galilee. He was willing to get uncomfortable for 40 days of fasting in the wilderness to be tempted of Satan and to overcome. He was willing to get uncomfortable when one of his disciples betrayed him with a kiss. He was willing to get uncomfortable with that cat of nine tails as it lacerated his back. He was willing to get uncomfortable as the crown of thorns was placed on his head. He was willing to get uncomfortable as he hung on an old rugged cross, rejected by God, rejected by men for the sins of the world. Praise God! He was uncomfortable for you and for me. Thank God he was willing to be uncomfortable. We see the uncomfortable Christ. But not only we see the uncomfortable Christ, but I want you to see today the uncomfortable choice. Look in verse 23. The Bible says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me. One man said years ago that Jesus is a perfect gentleman. He will simply knock at your heart's door and give you the choice. Whether or not you'll let him come in. You know, in these days in America and around the world, folks are being brought to a crossroads of making a choice of what they're going to do with Jesus Christ. Brother Benny Hartley had sent a text message to Brother Johnny Pike today, and he shared it with a bunch of us today. And in his text message, he talked about, hey, listen, Jesus is coming soon. And the, when you begin to look at the book of Revelation and the mark of the beast and what the world goes through when the church is taken out of here. We're seeing a lot of eerie similarities of what's going on in our world today with this coronavirus and with the intrusion of the government and with all the things that are going on in our society. Could this be the hour where God has stopped the world long enough to get our attention to say before the trumpet sounds, before I split the eastern sky, I'm going to give you one more chance to get saved, to get right with God today. We all have a choice of what am I going to do with Jesus Christ. That, my friend, is a choice that we have. A choice that every man, woman, boy, or girl must make. It's a choice ultimately between heaven and hell. It's a choice between, as one man put it, between the gold here and now and the sweet by and by. It's a choice that Moses made as described in the book of Hebrews when the Bible says by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. In this hour, we have a choice that needs to be made. For some who are listening to me today, you say, but preacher, that choice is uncomfortable. That choice means if I get right with God, there are some things I've got to give up. I want to ask you a question today. If you're here and you're lost and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, is there anything in this world worth dying and going to hell for? If you're saved but you're not living saved, is there anything in this world worth continuing in to make you be ashamed when you stand before God one day. Parents, grandparents, aunts, 
uncles, listen, that your children and your grandchildren and your co-workers and your neighbors are watching your life. Is there anything in your life today that's worth continuing in, even if giving it up makes you feel like inside? This will make me uncomfortable. That will doom those around you because of your testimony. It's an uncomfortable choice today. We see the uncomfortable Christ. We see the uncomfortable choice. I want you to see the uncomfortable cost. Look again in verse 23. Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him... What's that four-letter word? Let's say it out loud together. Deny himself and take up his cross daily. Deny himself, taking up the cross. Listen, if we're going to be what we need to be, we've got to get out of our comfort zone and simply say, Lord, in these days, make me like a blank check. Lord, you fill in the place. You fill in the amount. Lord, here's my life in this hour. Please use me, I pray. By the way, you know the devil is the master of making us feel like that if we get all in for Jesus Christ, if we fully surrender our all to Him, that it's just going to be so painful. It's just going to be so uncomfortable. It's going to be just this terrible gloom, despair, and agony on me moment. And so many times, nothing could be farther from the truth. A little over a year ago, my son came to me on a couple of occasions. He said, Dad, there's this place that we have went to to eat after teen soul wedding called Chipotle. And man, we need to go there sometime, Dad. Now, to be honest with you, the first time, I was kind of skeptical. Those that know me, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a steak and taters kind of guy. You know, give me some steak, some taters, loaded salad, blended lettuce, maters, cheese, thousand island dressing, praise God. I mean, I'm just a, a country boy, so Chipotle. I didn't even know how to say the word right for a while. May still don't. And then for what they had, it seemed like it might be a touch price. But I said, all right, so let's load up and go. You want to go to Chipotle? Let's go to Chipotle. So we loaded up, and we got there. I said, all right, now what are we going to eat? He said, Dad, what I like is I like these things called these steak burritos. I said, well, it's got steak in it, so that's good. So we get up there to the counter. And they roll out this big old burrito thing. And, and, and all right, what do you want? Well, put me some steak and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then Frankie said, son, he said, no, son, he said, dad, yeah, <laughs> you need to try this chipotle sauce. I said, okay, well, can I get some of that? And the lady back there says, that costs extra. I said, well, I guess I'm already here in for, in for a, a pinch, in for a pound. Put some chipotle sauce on there too. So had it loaded up, rolled that bad boy up, looked like this giant hoagie in it in a burrito shell and we come down and we sit down man i'm gonna tell you what when i began to put that bad boy in my mouth i was skeptical i was slightly uncomfortable i felt like at the moment before i ate it that it seemed pricey but i'm gonna tell you what man that'll make a puppy pull a freight train it about bruised the top of my mouth as my tongue was smacking the ridge trying to get that bad boy down listen what i'm telling you is it wasn't nearly as bad as i thought it would be and you listen to me. if you give your heart and life to jesus christ it's really not a sacrifice it's really not an imposition listen it really is the greatest thing you'll ever do in your life there's a joy in Jesus that this world cannot offer today. So we see the uncomfortable Christ. We see the uncomfortable choice. We see the uncomfortable cause. But I want you to see as we close, verse 23, we see the uncomfortable continuation. The Bible says, and take up his cross daily and follow me. See, the Christian life is a life of keeping on coming. It's not a one-time choice. It's a daily decision to keep following Jesus. For some of you, perhaps, this uncomfortable
possible coronavirus has been used of God as a wake-up call to bring you back to a right relationship with the Lord. Maybe it's been a kick in the seat of our pants as born-again believers who have been living for God to say, you know what, it's time on the other side of this and in this hour to get out of my comfort zone and to keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on keeping on for Jesus Christ. Sometimes in life we get off track. I'll never forget a number of years ago we were in Durham at the Shady Grove Church and my wife and a group of ladies loaded up in a church van and we're on their way to Goldsboro, North Carolina for the ladies retreat. And from where we were located at, you get on 540 East, travel up to where Highway 264 is, jump on 264, 64, 264. Then when you get to the divide in the road, 64 goes to your left, 264 goes to your right. Well, 264 that goes to your right will take you down to uh, an exit where you can jump on a highway. It'll take you down to Goldsboro. If you stay on 64, it'll take you to Rocky Mountain. My wife gave me a call. She said, Frank, she said, something strange is going on. I said, what's going on? She said, honey. I just looked up at a sign, and it said, Welcome to Rocky Mount. I said, Honey, you have went the wrong way. You, you got off track. But you know what? The ladies were able to turn things around and come on back and backtrack. They were able to get to the ladies' retreat, maybe late, but late than never, but they had gotten off track. Today, I'm talking to a lot of people today that, if we'll be honest, before this coronavirus came, a lot of folks were off track. Listen, you may have been sitting on a church pew, coming to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, but the reality is you were just doing what made you feel comfortable. You were unwilling to move out of your comfort zone to be the very best version of yourself for Jesus that God could help you to be. There is one thing that could come from this coronavirus. Could it be in this hour that God has moved out of, out of our comfort zone so that we can get back on track and become the man or woman of God? He wants us to be. I know these are uncomfortable times in our country and our community. But may God help us in this hour after all that Christ has done for us on Calvary and after all that God is doing for us today to be willing to become gravely uncomfortable that we might be what God wants for us to be. As the old chorus says, After what He's done for me, After what He's done for me, how can I do less than give him my best and live for him completely after what he's done for me? Uncomfortable. Would you be willing to make the choice today to become uncomfortable for Jesus Christ? Let's bow for prayer. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. No one looking around here on property. Folks watching on Facebook in their living room, their bedroom, their kitchen, hotel room, wherever you're watching. Folks may be here in town sitting around the radio right now. I want to ask you some questions. First of all, I'll ask you this question. If you died today, are you 100% sure that heaven will be your home? It's not hope so. It's not a maybe so. Do you know that you know that you know? You have trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Not been baptized, not a member of a church, not, not giving offerings. No, have you ever bowed your head and give your heart to Jesus Christ? Do you know that you're saved? You've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. Why don't you right now, in this difficult hour, give your heart to Him? Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to come in your heart. Ask Him to be your Savior. Why don't you right now, if you want to get saved, and say, here in this hour, I choose to bow my knee and receive Jesus as my Savior. Right now, won't you pray this little prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Please, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. Take away my sins. And Lord, help me starting right now. You being my help to live for you and to serve you. Thank you for saving me, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved today. Maybe you're here today on property, listening to the radio, watching on Facebook Live, and you're saved, but you know that you've not been living saved. You know
know that your relationship with the Lord has not been what it needs to be and in this hour through this coronavirus God has used this to get your attention there are some who are starting to watch church that have not watched church in a long time there are folks who are driving in for church services who haven't been on church property for a church service in a long time there's folks in this town who are maybe listening to their radio today, listening to church services that have gotten away from God, that have not in a long time. Maybe some of you are starting to read your Bible again. Some of you are beginning to try to begin to live for God like you ought to. Right now, won't you bow your head? Ask God to forgive you for the way you were living. And ask the Lord today, God, I choose you. If it makes me uncomfortable, if it's difficult, no matter what it costs after what you did for me, Lord, I'm going to do my very best to live for you and serve you. Rededicate your life to Jesus. Maybe here today you're saved and you're living for the Lord. Maybe you've had some lines in your life. You're like, Lord, I'm going to live for you, but I'm not going to cross this line. I'm only going to go so far. Lord, I, I, I don't want to be uncomfortable. May we pray right now, God, move me out of my comfort zone and help me be bold for Christ. Would you do that, Father, today? You know the needs. And I pray that today, all of us, would be willing to make the uncomfortable choices to get saved, to rededicate our lives back to the Lord. Or as Christians, just simply say, God, in this hour of the uncomfortable, God, may I be uncomfortable for you. Dying myself, taking up my cross daily. By the way, a tool that was used for death. May we die to self every day and say, God, 110% all in, I'm going to serve you. Hear our prayers right now, we pray. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. And amen. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for joining us. If you made a decision today or whenever you watch this service you make a decision i want to hear about it man it's exciting at the house I, wednesday night had a couple text messages that come in folks that made decisions i want to hear from you give me a call or send me a text message to 910-358-4354 want to hear from you today please don't forget tonight on facebook live five o'clock Singspiration, man. The Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Tonight we're going to do that. We're going to have with us Miss Chastity Fisher, Miss Rachel Jones Manning, the Dawson Road Men's Trio. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Please tune in. Tell your family and friends. Share and let's tune in and worship the Lord this evening. Thank you again for those watching on Facebook. Soon as we go off the air, please share today's service with all of your Facebook friends. Let's use this medium to get the gospel out around the world in this hour. Thank you for being here. I'm going to sign off to the Facebook crowd and it'll give me a moment to speak to our driving crowd. God bless you. We'll see you tonight.